Praise God. Brother Swire, we're talking about rest here. And we see that because of unbelief, the children of Israel were under the wrath of God and not able to enter into his rest. And I think if we understand that word rest in the Hebrew, there are several words. One of them, of course, that we often refer to is the Shabbat or the Sabbath. This is not the rest he's talking about. That's just a cessation from work. The rest he's talking about here goes into two concepts, and we actually find that in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. And this is the rest that causes the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. The first rest is menacha, and that word has the idea of a shepherd taking his flock to a particular destination. God is bringing us to a destination. That destination is for us to be in Christ. The second word for rest is nuach, and it's the idea of that shepherd taking those ones into a safe place while he guards and protects them while they're able to then go into pasture and enjoy the benefit of knowing the shepherd is there to meet their needs. This is the rest we're talking about, sanctifying rest, justifying rest. We rest in our salvation when we know that we have our faith in Christ Jesus. Nothing's going to pull us out unless we step away from the covenant. And unbelief, as you said so well, is the problem in the church today. And why do I know that? Because we're bringing everything else into the equation instead of entering into his rest, which is our destination of Christ and resting in his finished work. We cease from our activities as far as what we do to earn righteousness or to maintain righteousness. So it affects our justification and our sanctification. John, you cannot enjoy this rest, have this rest, walk in this rest. <clears throat> and you said it very well. Without understanding the cross of Christ. Exactly. That is and the, the rest. price that Jesus Christ there paid that we might have victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Faith in Christ and what Christ did at the cross, it gives us the ability to enjoy this rest. Right. Thank God for it. Praise the exactly. Lord. I've been on both sides of this fence, and really all of us all have. Of us have. Yes. And I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't trade what I have now. For nothing else. And I want every believer around the world to, en to enter into this rest and to enjoy it Amen. and to walk in it and to, and to proclaim the grace and the love of God because the Lord wants us to walk in faith, believing and um, with joy in our soul. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Praise God. And uh, don't you think this is at least part of what Paul was talking about? Absolutely. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. He is the rest. He Take is my the yoke Sabbath. upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, for you shall find rest yes, unto your soul. Exactly. For my yoke is easy, easy and, my and my burden is light. light. He demands so little of us Amen. and gives us so much. That's it. Praise God. Just come believing. <laughs> yes, right. Amen. And uh, I won't, I won't, that, that's the reason we preach the cross, we sing the cross, we talk the cross, uh, we, we teach the cross, is because that's the way to rest. Mm -hmm. it, it leaves us with a rest that is joy unspeakable and full of glory, as Simon Peter said. Yes. And I want every Christian to have that. It's not God's purpose or, or, or way for his children to be heavy laden. And he wants us to, to have the joy of the Lord in our soul. And you can have that by placing your faith exclusively in Christ and what Christ did for you at the cross. Individuals trying to find this rest through psychology are only looking into their inwardness to try to find that which they need to do outwardly to make things better. Those that are purpose driven are driven to do things not to rest in what they believe in in the finished work of the cross. And I hope that every preacher who's teaching psychology will get so miserable that they can't stand it and have to start preaching and teaching the word of Almighty Amen. God. That's it, yes. Can I share this illustration? Sure, certainly. Real quick. Last Sunday, last Sunday morning, uh, we kind of have a routine in our house. While me and Jill are getting ready, for church, and right before she leaves, Abby watches McKenzie. 
and they play upstairs in their little room. You know, they just play and watch TV. Well, I went upstairs to get Mackenzie. And she is, of course, fussing, not really wanting to come down because she's having a good time. Which one was that? Mackenzie. Yeah. Mackenzie's three. And I said, Mackenzie, we got to get dressed. And so as we were walking down, she just looked at me. She says, you got to be kidding me. (laughs) And I'm looking, I'm like, well, where where did you learn that? You know, and she kept saying that. But I want to kind of say this about this. When many Christians, they don't understand that what Jesus Christ did was not only enough to save them, but to give them rest from their problems and rest from themselves. Right. Yeah. I think there's that, Ill, that, that, that mentality comes up. You've got to be kidding me because they've gone so long with trying and struggling and, and, and trying to earn something from God when you can't earn anything from God. Right. He's got nothing for sale. He's got nothing for sale. And I want to encourage people that whatever you're trying to do, all you have to do is place your faith in what he's done for you and let the Holy Spirit work inside of you to work in you, to make you into what you ought to be. And I love what you said a moment ago. He gave us rest. We need that rest every single day, a rest from ourself. You know, Brother Sprague, I don't want to jump ahead, but I'd like to read two verses that will help better understand these earlier verses. In verses uh, 10 and 11 of this same chapter, it says, For he that has entered into his rest, kataopsis is the word in the Greek, I'll mention something about that in a moment, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man should fall after the same example of unbelief. It's our responsibility to diligently and you could put a, a synonym there, believe, to enter into this rest. Now, this word rest here is a Greek word, but it has a Hebraism with the idea of abode. It's not something that we do once in a while, and it's abode. It's a place where we take up residence. We abode in this. God brings us to this destination of being in Christ. We rest in Christ. And as Gabe perfectly said, then the Holy Spirit, as our faith is in that finished work of the cross, he does the work. We are receiving end. We are passive. We don't produce it. He works in us. He that is in us produces that work. Paul would say that for we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He's creating in us. We're the masterpiece. We're the canvas. He's the artist. You know, every morning I awaken, I think, Lord, what are you going to do today? (laughs) And I know he's going to do something great every yeah. single day. And the more we believe it, the greater it gets. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Lord. 